Howdy folks, how's it going? Gabriel here. Um, pardon the sort of blinding light here. The sun is going down here in uh, Jasper National Park, Canada. But I'll try not to uh, squint too much. So in this video, then I thought that I would talk a little bit about my own personal experiences of that beyond um, this physical material world. So it is definitely a valid question for those who are on a, a spiritual path, and for those who are not on a spiritual path, so for everybody, um, of whether or not there's actually anything that exists beyond this physical world. Of course, science is, uh, is atheistic, not necessarily all science, scientists are atheists, but um, the worldview of science is that the world, the entire universe, is simply a physical realm um, of matter and energy and that it is all controlled by physical laws and that uh, we are a physical body with a byproduct of consciousness. It's called an epiphenomenon of consciousness. It's that uh, in, the, in the course of evolution at some point consciousness arose as part of the evolutionary process because it was advantageous to uh, to some animal or whatever to be conscious rather than just a machine and and, uh, and so consciousness just kind of popped into existence out of nowhere somewhere in, in Earth's history and so that's why we're conscious is just because it's it's beneficial to evolution um, to uh, to the dominance of species to be conscious versus um, not having any consciousness I guess um, which to me makes no sense, but uh, still, it is a valid question, is there anything beyond this, this physical world? And uh, nobody can tell you absolutely one way or another. We won't know until we die and we find out whether um, it's complete blackness, just all of a sudden there's nothing and that's it, our body dies and that's the end of it. Or suddenly we're in some other realm, some other world or we're, we're hovering uh, as a spirit above our body, um, you know, seeing the, the trees and everything from a uh, higher perspective and then drift into, you know, the tunnel of light or however it works, I don't claim to know. But I just wanted to use one little uh, logical reasoning here to suggest why people should believe that there is a uh, realm beyond this one, and then I'll get to my own personal experiences in this regard. So uh, this is, I don't know, maybe kind of silly, but there are sort of four, four different categories here. Either you believe in the spirit world or you don't, and either the spirit world exists or it doesn't, and the existence or lack thereof of something beyond this physical world is of course completely independent from our own personal belief in it. Now, if you uh, don't believe in life after death, and then it turns out that there was no life after death, you die and that's it, then um, all is fine, you didn't lose anything, hopefully you just enjoyed your, your life uh, as best as you could, and made the most of it, and then that was it. But then if... Uh, if you believe that there is a spirit world and then it turns out that there isn't a spirit world then you also uh, you know lost nothing okay you believed in something that it, as it turns out it didn't exist but it was nothing detrimental to you hopefully you didn't you know waste your time on religious wars for example for your god which you then uh, discovered didn't exist but so that's one scenario then another one is that uh, you believe in the spirit world and then it turns out that it does exist. And then the fourth one is that you don't believe in the spirit world but then it turns out that it does exist. The point is you might as well believe that there's a spirit world and take your chances and uh, uh, if it turns out that there isn't then nothing lost. If it turns out that there is then then you may have uh, very well made better use of your time here on Earth than if you did. So that's just some some uh, uh, little you know logical reasoning in this department. So getting on to my own personal spiritual experiences, which I have 
talked about in other videos, they aren't nearly as extensive as, for example, Teal Swan, who does um, out-of-body adventures on a fairly regular basis and, and is you know, completely in touch with, uh, with other beings and, and all kinds of cool and crazy stuff. But my uh, first and most vivid experience of awareness of a realm beyond this one, of coming from an, uh, another dimension, was when I was six years old, and pardon me as I look in that general direction every once in a while, because I saw a grizzly bear while I was hiking up the trail there. Um, a grizzly with cubs. Mama, obviously, with two cubs. But I'm pretty sure it's uh, not heading this way. I'll, I'll see it if, it if it does. So when I was six years old and I was in a movie theater watching the movie Superman. The first Superman movie that came out in 1978. And so I'm, uh, I'm watching this movie. It's the beginning of the movie. And the very... Uh, first scene, I believe, depicts Superman as a baby with his parents at the planet Krypton, where he comes from. And they're, they're but they're in like this this enclosed room with like lots of crystals and stuff. And they are uh, preparing Superman to be sent to Earth. So they're putting him in this little space pod, and he's just a baby. And so they put him in this tiny little space pod, and and then close it up, and then. The space pod is sent to Earth, and so they show the the uh, um, the space pod like sort of going down through the dimensions, and there's like flames and stuff, and and it's this it's this uh, kind of uh, tumultuous journey, and they show Superman, you know, as a baby in the space pod, uh, crying and stuff. And so, in the course of watching this, then a memory was triggered in me from my subconscious as I'm sitting there in this movie theater, six years old, completely floods my consciousness that I had experienced something similar to this. And I discussed this in my interview with Teal Swan from a year ago, and she thought it was really funny. Like she said she could, she could actually see this experience of mine. And she thought that it was funny that I was, uh, that I was thinking that I was actually in a space pod because I wasn't actually like in a space pod, but I was... Uh, you know, it was just my spirit coming down through the dimensions in a, you know, in a similar sort of a way of coming into this, you know, more densified uh, world of Earth. And what she said was that this actually occurred after I was born. I had assumed that this was a pre-birth memory, but she said it happened like sometime in the year or so uh, after I was born that, that my spirit from this other dimension came down and joined uh, the spirit that had, that had originally entered this, the baby that was me, and, um, and so I was, I was like merging into this, uh, this body after, after birth. I don't know. Um, I just know that this was not a childhood sort of vision or imagining, you know, I'm sitting there in the movie theater thinking like, oh, that would be cool if... Uh, if I'd experienced something like that, it was just like it overwhelmed me. It it it, uh, it just flooded me. This this absolutely like visceral memory of of having experienced something along these lines. So when I was uh, 19 or 20, then I started reading the books uh, "Journeys Out of the Body" and "Far Journeys" by Robert A. Moreau, which is about his own personal out of body experiences. And after reading these books, then I was curious to experience it for myself. And so I followed the directions in the back of the book on how to bring about an out-of-body experience. And had no luck at first. It wasn't until six or nine months later that, um, and I recount uh, this, this, these experiences, the out-of-body experiences, in my book, Kundalini and the Art of Being. So it was... The following summer, this was in the fall, fall of 1992 that I read the, the Robert A. Monroe books. Summer of 1993, I'm living up in Eugene, Oregon, and I'm taking a nap in the middle of the afternoon, and all of a sudden I wake up 
and my face is next to the wall, so I think. And I'm thinking, this is weird. Why? How did my? How come I'm looking at the wall? You know, I, I must have turned around in my sleep somehow, and, and I'm in this weird position. Well, eventually I realized. Pardon me, a uh, little bit of wind coming through here. Eventually I realized that I was not facing the wall. I was facing the ceiling. I was out of my body, up against the ceiling, facing the ceiling there, and. With that, I had the realization that if I were to turn over, then I would see my body lying on the bed below me. And that totally freaked me out, and so I, uh, um, somehow I, I, I woke myself up, I went back into my body, and, uh, and that was it. I never, I never you know, was able to see my, my own body there. And then a couple of months later, then I started to have out-of-body experiences on a regular basis. I was living somewhere else. And uh, I forget if I'd started doing the, the exercises as described in the book again or, or what, but over the course of like a couple of weeks, then I started to experience myself leaving my body in the middle of the night, um, almost every night. And I never, I never got to where I could, I could journey anywhere. Um, I, I never actually saw my own body. I just remember hovering around the room and then I just kind of got freaked out or just couldn't figure out how to control myself or, or something, I forget exactly. But I remember so, so vividly that experience of my spirit coming out of my body, slipping out of my body, and um, that experience of, of being pure spirit and, uh, and how simultaneously weird and foreign it was and yet also familiar in some way and uh, it just it just kind of made sense that oh okay this 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 feels closer to who I really am than when I'm in a body at the same time that it was very strange and weird and, and I never really got used to it but it was it was very uh, it was very vivid, it was very, very, uh, very real to me. Nothing like just a, a, very, uh, a very real dream or something like that. It was definitely in a completely different category. So, other than that, then I would say that my otherworldly experiences have been uh, as a result of various, uh, you know, hallucinogenic type experiences of mine from mushrooms and LSD and marijuana. I couldn't, I couldn't necessarily call any of my psych psychedelic experiences proof to me of, of the spirit realm because of course your, your mind is being distorted and you're not really sure what, what is a result of, of uh, um, distortions within your mind as a result of you know chemicals in your brain that you've ingested versus seeing seeing reality beyond the veil many of these experiences can can feel as if you're you're seeing the real reality beyond your normal human perception but it's hard to say but i would say that that uh, the most <clears throat> the most intense experiences that i've had in this realm were from smoking marijuana and I'm extremely sensitive to it, and I've since stopped, uh, I mean, I haven't done mushrooms or LSD in 20 years, and the last time I smoked uh, ganja was two years ago, and it wasn't a fun experience. My system is just kind of too sensitive, and, and uh, it just hits me really, really intensely. And, uh, and so I've pretty much forsaken, forsaken drugs of that type uh, for the rest of my life, I think. But, but still, I've had some very amazing and very uh, mind-opening experiences with pot. And many of them I traveled deep within to my own consciousness and as a result came to understandings about consciousness that I would not have otherwise and that I, that I believe to be real in terms of in terms of adventuring, exploring, I've had
had experiences in which I felt as if I, I touched God in some way, in which I basically journeyed into my own consciousness, deep, deep enough into the subconscious, that I accessed that place where my own consciousness merges with divine consciousness. Our own personal consciousness is simply a uh, extension of divine consciousness. In the same way that an island, which is poking up out of the ocean, may appear to be uh, separate, if you look at it from the surface, you just see this, this bit of land sticking out of the water. But of course we know that this is actually just a piece of the earth that is sticking up out of the water. And so our conscious mind is kind of like that part of the island that is sticking up out of the water and can look around and see just ocean and make the distinction between land and ocean and think, okay, well, I'm this separate hunk of land, you know, immersed in this sea. All right, so my memory card ran out there in the middle of the uh, video, but I just wanted to wrap things up here real quick. That pretty much sums up my own personal experiences of uh, uh, realms beyond this physical world. Um, as I was saying at the beginning of the video, there's no way to know for sure. These could, of course, be somehow just distortions of the brain. Um, you know, that the brain has capacities to, to make it seem as if we're having these otherworldly experiences when it actually isn't the case, who knows. But just using basic logic, then I'm going to go with the, uh, with the assumption that there is life beyond death and hope for the best. That's based on both logic and my own intuition and just what makes sense to me that, that if we were born once, we could have been born twice. If it happened this time, it could have happened previously. I definitely believe in reincarnation. And it just makes sense to me that the energy of our consciousness, even though energy isn't really the right word, the right word because that kind of implies this physical realm, but our consciousness exists and it doesn't make sense to me that it just ceases to exist all of a sudden. It also does not make sense to me this scientific reasoning that consciousness, consciousness just popped into animals out of nowhere just as part of the evolutionary process. How does that work? So animals were, were basically machines, completely unaware, and then just out of the blue, just consciousness just kind of popped into their being. Uh, somehow, like that, that just doesn't make any logical sense to me. Putting it all together, then I believe that there is life beyond this realm, and I'm living my life accordingly, and uh, assuming that there is a reason to focus on the spiritual, spiritual path, the spiritual quest, and to make evolution of one spirit the primary goal of life, because that's what you're going to take with you. Um, as John Lennon said, you don't take nothing with you but your soul. Um, so uh, um, it's a worthy endeavor to me. All right. Take care. Have a good one.